Hello. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be discussing finding your art style and I am going to be drawing with you guys as I am rediscovering my art style so I wanted to set myself up as best I can so I went for a walk to clear my head and I had a shower and I made a coffee and had breakfast which was a fried egg and toast and now we are going to be delving into the drawing and I'm gonna sit here for a while and figure out why I've been in an art rut, how I can get out of it and I'm also gonna look up some inspiration. I already have inspiration that I get for my work so I will be putting up um, the different inspirations that I have in my favourite artists and where I where I learned from for most of my um, art. Like I think there is a bit of a misconception with finding your style there is nothing wrong with like taking bits and pieces from other artists because really no one was the first everyone is learning from each other and i will delve into this a little bit more shortly but i do think that there is um a few misconceptions in the art community regarding style and i do want to discuss whether you can steal a style and do you own a style and how you can take inspiration from other artists without stealing from them so with that let's get into the video clear your mind before drawing i like to walk or shower to get into a creative mindset it will help you relax whether it's having food or reading a book or taking a walk literally anything you can do that helps you unwind for example i often find a good walk or maybe cooking some food or something like that it helps me relax and also gives me inspiration especially from the walk going out in nature and seeing things that might inspire me sometimes i even carry a small little sketchbook and i jot down any ideas or quick sketches that i before starting your work revisit the fundamentals for portrait artists study muscle and bone structure Look at how Disney artists exaggerate features while keeping a believable structure underneath. Understanding these basics will give you a solid foundation to build on. So when I was first learning how to draw, I spent a lot of time studying anatomy books and practicing different body parts. This practice helped me so much in developing a solid understanding of human proportions and this knowledge then allows me to manipulate that for different styles. Next, let's talk about drawing with purpose. When you draw out of habit, you might make subconscious decisions that limit your growth. For example, with my Jinx drawing, I focused on black and white techniques to challenge myself and refine my style. Think about your stylistic choices, bright colours, strong line art, thick eyelashes, glowing elements, and use them intentionally. By actively thinking about these decisions, you move beyond muscle memory and train yourself to draw better. One technique I use is setting specific goals for each session. For instance, one day I might focus on improving my shading, while another day I might experiment with different colour palettes. It's important to gather inspiration before you start drawing. Stay within your comfort zone initially, like finding a portrait or landscape that you like. Create a collage of references from artists you admire, identify what you like about each composition, posing, highlights, background, and keep these elements in mind as you draw. This focused approach helps you incorporate these aspects into your own work. For example, I like the way certain artists specifically highlight the eyes and how they use highlights in the eyes. So I study their work and I incorporate similar things into my drawings. Another helpful exercise is to recreate a piece of art you admire, but with your own twist, making it yours. Now on that topic, I do want to discuss if taking inspiration from other artists is stealing. Now this debate has been around forever and I can only really give my own opinion on it. And my opinion is that taking inspiration is not stealing. You might subconsciously replicate elements from other artists, but true theft is very rare. Being an artist is all about borrowing, and it's doing it with intention. It is not copying and replicating something. Now, even if you are doing it subconsciously, you are still not stealing. If you look through the ages, you will see 
replicating is just part of being an artist no one was the first to do something for the most part like no one is the first so the concept of stealing a whole style is just such a controversial topic and it's such a nuanced discussion that I don't know if I can speak on it you know I can only give my opinion and that opinion is going to be polarizing and no like not everyone's going to agree with it and that's okay and this video is supposed to be educational so I don't want to give my opinion on that but if feel free to discuss in the comments below your opinion and yeah I remember there was a time when I was really struggling to find my own art style and I'm sure every artist struggles with this. I kept comparing my work to others and felt like I was copying what I saw. It wasn't until I took a step back and started focusing on what I enjoyed about drawing that I began to see my unique style emerge. So what truly makes a style? When you look at a drawing, how do you know, oh, Artentics drew that? I think that's a hard like, question to answer for me, especially because I'm making a video on this, you'd think that I'd have an answer to it, but I just don't. Its styles are very subjective, they change, the way you draw changes, what you put emphasis on changes, like, when you see something that you like another artist doing and you incorporate it into your own style, that changes. So, saying that a recognisable style, like what makes a style, it's just such a subjective question. But I think there is elements that will continue to show up in your work whether it's subconscious or not. For me, no matter how much I intentionally try to use muted colour palettes, I always end up with super high saturated images. And I, I think that's just because that's what's pleasing to me. Even when I'm intentionally trying to do muted colour palettes, I'll always end up putting like strong lighting or neon signs in. I just can't help it. And for me, that's what defines a style. Something that you enjoy doing. It's something that looks pleasing to you. And that can change. Your style is not going to stay the same. And that's okay. Here's a few exercises and tips that might help you with your um, style journey. Draw the same thing in different styles. So this could be drawing a portrait realistically, then in a Powerpuff style, then in a Disney style, then in a Cubist style. This can help you see which elements you enjoy drawing and which came naturally to you and which just didn't feel right while you were drawing it. You can also analyze and critique your own work. Look at your previous drawings and identify what you like and what you think could be improved. Next, experiment with new techniques. Set specific goals for your drawing sessions. For instance, I just said that I would often sit down and try to experiment with a specific colour palette and I never ended up sticking to it and that's fine. This helps me realise that maybe muted colour palettes aren't for me. And maybe another day, Focus on improving your shading and doing it differently than you normally would and see how that feels. See if you like how that looks. Using the right tools and resources can also make a massive difference and here are some that have helped me. I'm sure every artist would have heard of Skillshare by now but it is a great platform. It has various courses on drawing and painting and some of your favourite artists might have courses on there. Another one would be Patreon. If you support your favourite artists there, they often have tutorials for how to do things and often if you like how they shade and you want to learn how to do it, you may be able to find it on Patreon. I will also have a list of websites in the description for maybe portrait studies or finding poses. If you're interested in any of that, that all of my like links will be in the description. And with that, this video comes to an end. I really hope you enjoyed our discussion and if you have any thoughts or experience to share, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can also subscribe or check out the description to see my Etsy shop and a list of my socials. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye!